In part one of this series, we set up a basic Drupal Commerce product attribute to select a hat color via drop down select list. Now, we'll take this a step further. I'll click edit to go back to the attribute. Here you can see the values we set in the previous video. I want to change this so that we can see actual colors rendered on the screen instead of text. The first thing I will need to change is the element type that controls how the attribute is displayed on the product page. I'll change this to rendered attribute, then save the change. We automatically get taken back to the product attribute list, so I'll click edit again. From here, I'll then go to the Manage Fields tab. There are no custom fields yet, so we need to add a new field for color code. First, I'll select a field type for the new color field. As you can see, there are many field types to choose from. I'll find color and select it. I could start with this new field, but I have already created one similar. I'll select that existing field and use it instead. This doesn't really do much other than use a few settings I had already previously set. The fields label is one of those settings, so I'll leave it and move on to the help text. This text is only seen by store administrators who might be adding the products. It can be useful for providing clarity and may be an example of what is expected. There are a few other options we could configure here, but I'll leave them as is and save these settings. Okay, the field has been created. We can now manage the form display. The form display is the configuration for how site administrators will see the fields. What I'm interested in here is the new color field I've created. The widget drop-down list provides color field specific options for displaying the field. I'll just leave this as default. Some fields have additional settings accessed through this gear icon. I could enter some placeholder examples, but we already have an example in our description. I'll just save the display as we have it. Here we have a name and color field. I don't want the name to appear on product pages, so I'll move it to disabled. I also don't want the name of each color to be displayed, so I'll change the label to hidden. For formatting options, I want the field to render as a color swatch. In the additional settings, I can optionally change the shape of the rendered attribute, as well as its width, height, and opacity display. I'll update these settings, then save this display configuration. All right, that is done. I'll go back to our main product attribute page. If we scroll back down to our values, we see our new color code fields. Now, all I need to do is enter the hex values and opacity for the colors we want to display to customers. I'll do this and save the settings, which completes part two of this video series. Thank you.